watch more programs like this on cable and stream with PCN Select. Subscribe at PCNTV.com. I'm Brigadier General John Gibbon, and although originally from Pennsylvania, at a very young age my family moved to North Carolina, and it was from North Carolina that I received an appointment to West Point. I graduated in the class of 1847 and spent most of my career before the war in artillery. When the war broke out, I was stationed in the West, but we were all ordered to come East. And it was very shortly I was given my first field command. It was a bunch of Western regiments, mainly from Wisconsin and Indiana. They were rumored to be very unruly discipline-wise, but I'd like to think that I whipped them into shape, and they later received the nickname the Iron Brigade. Now, as I was wounded in the Battle of Fredericksburg, when I returned to duty, I was promoted, and I was given command of a division. And then, when an opening became available in the 2nd Corps, it was requested that I command the 2nd Division in the 2nd Corps under Winfield Scott Hancock. Well, now it's June, late June. We've received word the Army of the Potomac has a new commander, an old Army friend of mine by the name of George Gordon Meade. And then one night, we got word that uh, action had started in Gettysburg, and another old friend of mine, Major General John Reynolds had been killed. General Meade sent for General Hancock and he wanted him to go up to Gettysburg and act in his name to see the condition of affairs. General Hancock left and General Meade ordered that I take command of the 2nd Corps and await further orders. This was unusual. I was not the ranking general. This was not the way things were done in the Army. But General Meade got the permission to assign commands as he saw fit and he started exercising it right there. It was early in the morning, on the beginning of the second day, when I finally got the second goal into position, and we were assigned a place on Cemetery Ridge, leading south from the main positions on Cemetery Hill and Culp's Hill. Well, by now you know the disastrous story of the second day when Sickles advanced without advising anybody and pretty much made a shambles of his corps, and we had to pull units from all over the field to plug the holes in his line and bring them back. And at the end of the day, the Third Corps had their original line with only 50% strength. That night, General Meade called a council of war. Well, I was the junior officer present. I was surprised that I was summoned, but he told me that he wanted me there because I was no longer in the command of the Second Corps. General Hancock had resumed it. And as required at a council of war, we were given questions. Junior officer, I'm the first one to speak. Basically, all the other officers present there agreed with my fundamental point of view, which basically was that we should stay where we were, make the necessary corrections to the deployment of the Army, not attack, and not wait to do anything until Lee did something. There were some minor disagreements to this point, but by and large, that's what the council decided. And I'll never forget, at the very end of the council, when things were breaking up and everyone was going back to their camps, General Meade came to me and said something that I found later to be very prophetic. General Meade, if Lee attacks tomorrow, where do you think it will be? And my answer to you, General, was, if he comes, it will be in your front, in the center of our line. Why do you say that, General? Because he attacked our flanks on the 2nd, vigorously, with great slaughter, and the flanks wavered, but they held fast. And he's going to think that I stripped the center of troops to reinforce the flanks, and he'll think that we're weak in the center. Well, I hope he does attack us in the center, General. I assure you, we will defeat him. I'm sure you will.